Hi, welcome to the channel. Um, I was just journaling and something really powerful started happening. I started coming into contact with this aspect of self that I've been trying to sweep under the rug, that I've been trying to be in denial of for so long. Um, so before my fall, I was doing this 100-day self-connection experiment where I would meditate for two hours and then shoot a video every day sharing my experiences of the, of the meditation that day. And it felt so good to be con committed on that level to showing up to not only the meditation part, but the part where I, I would share with you guys every day. Something about that felt very healing. It was helping me grow through emotional resistance, emotional issues so quickly. I was really having to meet myself on all these different levels. Um, and it was really beautiful. And also looking back on that time, it's the most fulfilled I've ever been. It's the most, I was just in my purpose. You know, it was really the happiest period, the happiest three months of my life. And then I had this fall and I've covered this, um, uh, pretty extensively on the channel and that was about 11 months ago and it's like ever since the fall I have been unable to really go all in and commit to like a creative project or you know I've really truthfully guys in my heart I wanted to uh, do like another hundred day challenge again or something similar it's just something where I commit to a long period of sharing something something big like that you know where it really brings forward my discipline um, but I just haven't been able to, I haven't been able to sustain true consistency in my creative endeavors, uh, basically for this last year. And this has served a purpose because there's been so much healing that I've been going through, like, uh, incredible amounts of shadow work inner, like I've really had to learn inner child healing. I've had to learn healing on so many deep levels that I, I, it's like before the fall, it's like, wow, I didn't know anything about healing, to be honest. You know, I thought I did. And I, I knew some things, um, to be honest, but these last 11 months, it's been like, wow, getting a, getting a de degree and learning how to work with trauma, trauma on all levels. And, and so there's been that and there's so there's been this uh, deeper purpose to why I haven't been able to commit to being as creative as I want to be as consistently as I want to be because there's been so much healing that has been needed to be done. It's like the healing work has taken um, center stage. It's really been the been the primary movement. Um, and and that's been beautiful and, and that's, you know, the, my fall on the back of my head and neck, it, it led to that, uh, it led to me knowing myself at deeper depths than I ever have, to being less afraid of my darkness and darkness in general, like just the lack of fear I have towards darkness now. I mean, of course, there's still some there, but it's just, wow, infinite amounts less than it was 11 months ago. And I was feeling into today, like how I'm feeling better, you know, how I'm feeling um, like I want to commit again. Like, and I've been feeling this since Europe, honestly. So this has been a good five months that I've been feeling this pull towards time to commit again towards creative passions, towards really going all in in that direction. And today, as I was, as I was writing, um, I, I stumbled into this deep realization that the reason I haven't been able to go forward with a commitment in a, on a creative path um, in a consistent way is because there's still an, a, a, an aspect of self that hasn't been fully seen and embraced yet since the fall. And this aspect for me, it was even so hard to put it on paper to even go to this dark, dark place within me because of everything it brings up. And for me, it was this fear of being permanently um, diminished in some way because of the fall. There is this part of self. And now whether this is true 
in the big picture or not is irrelevant. It, what's relevant is that there's a part of, 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 of the self that feels this way. So part of myself felt like the fall had permanently diminished it. Like um, part of myself felt like there was brain damage that, and that's the first time I've even said that out loud and, and I've been able to even go there because I've been so afraid of that. It's like, I just have been trying to sweep that under the rug. I've been trying to be in denial of if there was any damage, if there was anything like that. Cause for some reason that just freaks me out. Um, or it had freaked me out. Like it, it, it had been like one of my biggest fears. And so like, there's this aspect of self that, that I really just had, had been leaving behind. I've been kind of like shutting out consciously a little bit, but mostly unconsciously. This part that said, Hey, I got really hurt. I got really damaged. Um, it felt like we got damaged in a way that could diminish us forever. Uh, it says things like, um, you know, what if we're not as, what if we're not as, uh, you know, prolific as we once were? What if we're not as good of a speaker as we once were, or as good of a writer or all of these fears that this part has that, that being diminished is attached to, right? diminished in all these ways. Like what if we don't have the endurance we once did to, to create, it, it has all these fears. And every time those fears would come up that, that fear of you are permanently diminished, you know, I would just say, no, nope. I would just try to like, I would just try to like turn away from that, push it away and, and be like, no, that's not the case. We're fine. We just had a little fall. It just, it just was a catalyst for massive amounts of trauma. There's nothing, you know, it, there's no truth to that. I would just push it away. And, and that part of me, it would start to feel like so unworthy and unseen. And, and it would just, it would remain there in, like in a deep, dark recess of my shadow. And every time I would go to do a creative commitment, like there would be like this 95% of me that would be like gung ho, ready to do this. I would feel good, feel recovered, you know, feel like it was my calling, my mission, but then there would be this part of me that I've been deni in, in denial of. And it would, is, you could call it a self-saboteur. And self-saboteur doesn't mean to label this part as bad or anything, just he would come up and be like, no, you see me first. Like this part of me has, has not been on board with a big commitment yet because his fears have not been resolved. His fears have not been brought into the light. It's like this part of me hasn't been embraced with love yet. I haven't, sh haven't been, I haven't had the courage, to be honest, the willingness or the courage to shine my light of awareness on, on this part of me and to see it and to, and, and, and one of the big things is allowing ourselves to, to, to like indulge this part of us in a sense, to allow ourselves to pretend to be this aspect for a little bit, like to go into that aspect fully, to feel that, to, to put it all on the table, you know, to really to really honor this part of ourselves by saying, you know, okay, are we diminished permanently? Is there, is this true? Let's look at this together. Let's feel this together. You know, this part of us that feels so afraid of, of not being as eloquent or not being a, as good of a writer or not being, uh, not having as much energy or whatever the fears are, whether we can see from a higher perspective, they're rational, irrational, whatever we want to, you know, whatever we're seeing from the higher truth. Like kind of just letting that go for a minute, always having the connection there, of course, but just really letting that go and going and, and honoring this one fully. And today during my writing, I, I finally did that. I finally let, I, what I did is I just let him talk. I let him talk. Um, yeah, I think I'd like to read what he wrote. So I'll just kind of read you what I was journaling here. What are the issues within that I have been afraid to touch on? The issue of if I had a brain injury. Yes and no are my answers. I actually feel like I kind of did, but also that I kind of didn't. I had a very penetra I had very penetrating and clear moments where I knew it was just trauma. And then I had moments where I knew it was an injury. Did I grow from the experience? Yes. Am I less afraid of the darkness within me because of the experience? Yes. Am I a better spiritual guide for others due to the experience? Yes. Why am I afraid of talking about it? The fear of never being 100% as intelligent or eloquent or having as high of a reading or learning level and capability. The fear of never being 
as good of a writer or speaker, the fear of permanently being handicapped for the rest of my life. Wow, these are some powerful fears to finally, for the first time since my fall, put out on paper. The fear of not being as capable, of not being able to work as hard or long, not having the endurance I used to have. Ultimately, these all point to the fear of being diminished in some form or, in some form or another. Well, then, I'm just reading you my journal. Well, ask yourself, do you feel diminished? And I'm, I'm, I'm asking this part of me that, that I haven't, you know, I'm like journaling with this part of myself, like bringing it forward. And I'm asking it, do you feel diminished? And this part of me says, yes. There is a part of me that feels diminished that I have been ignoring. And this is the part of me that has been resistant to me moving forward with my creative commitments. I've been doing my best not to see this part of me because it is a hard place to look. It is a painful place to look. And there is something here, feeling diminished, feeling unworthy of love because I refuse to see it. I try to sweep it under the rug and pretend it's not there. And in order for me to move forward, I need to fully see and embrace this part of me. And this brought back a, a very similar situation I had in my childhood where a, a big type of uh, traumatic situation happened where I spent my whole life in denial of it, pretending it didn't happen. And once I finally addressed it and shined light on it, uh, it was incredible the breakthrough I had and how I was able to move so much more freely through life. And I'm having that experience today and this is why I'm sharing this with you guys. So I refused to look within myself in that place for so long and I was desperately clinging to denial. In so many ways, this is exactly you know, how I've been approaching uh, this part of me since my fall. Desperately in denial of, of his pain the one who feels diminished, his wound, his truth. In the larger sense, it doesn't have to be true that I am diminished. I may be more capable than ever at some point, but that doesn't matter to this part of me that feels diminished. It isn't authentic or genuine to gaslight this aspect of myself. And then I wrote, maybe leaning in and pretending to be and indulging this part of me is a way to move through this energy kind of like I was sharing with you guys. And then I let him talk and, and here's what he said. Ever since we fell, I haven't fully felt like my complete 100% capable self. Um, this really goes back to seeing, and, and that's, yeah, and that's basically what he said is, uh, he just hasn't felt capable. And every time something comes up, that feels a little off, this part of myself will always revert it back to the fall and say, that must have been because of the fall, you know, that, uh, that we missaid that word, or, I mean, just the littlest things, that we forgot that thing that we were supposed to remember, or it's, it, it really could be any little deficiency, because this part of me that feels like, you know, deficient since the fall, hasn't been fully seen or met with love. So he's always going to come up and say, hey, look at me and try to pull me back to that memory that I've been trying to push away. Yeah, and that's, I'm just like figuring a lot of this out as I'm speaking. Um, whereas a lot of this stuff, you know, tripping over words, memory, it just comes from lots of kundalini energy too. Um, yeah. And the more I go back and revisit this old memory with love and with the courage and the willingness to see it fully, to see that wounded part of me that feels diminished, deficient, the more that I, I'm already feeling that wound heal and move today like so dramatically and profoundly. And when that starts to happen, then the real, then, then this part of yourself, the wounded part, like aligns and integrates with the real truth. The real truth that, yeah, sometimes when you have a massive kundalini awakening and tons of kundalini energy moving through you, you don't say words right. You Your memory, you go blank, you know, happens to my teacher all the time. I know my teacher, he, he always talks about how he's become basically dyslexic <laughs> since kundalini. Um, so that's common. But it's like I've had this wounded part of me since the fall that I hadn't, I hadn't even really, this is why I had to, haven't even wrote a blog piece about it, guys, is because I've been terrified to put this out on paper to see this part of me. 
And it's like finally today something shifted where I have enough enough space. Um, had a really beautiful session with one of my teachers. And that always helps. So yeah, I just wanted to um, just share how much that helped me today. To look into a dark, dark corner like the recesses of my shadow. And to really bring that forward. Even though there was this big part of me that wanted to be in denial of it. That was afraid of it. That wanted to just move away from it. Pretend like it didn't happen. Uh, I wanted to share this because ultimately if we do that, like that part of us, it's still going to keep coming up and it's going to act in ways of like self-sabotage. It's going to like, control our drives. It's going to lead us into more addiction. And it's like we're not really going to be free to move forward in our in our in a divine way, in our in our mission, in our purpose here, if we're sweeping stuff under the rug, if we're burying stuff in our shadow. And I just feel so much more liberated and and I've realized that writing is like the most healing thing for me. And I've been avoiding it because I've been wanting to avoid that part of myself who feels diminished since the fall. And like I said, whether that's true or not, it doesn't matter in this context of inner child healing. You, you let that part of you own that truth. And that's how that, that energy, that pain, that wound starts to heal and, and unravel. Um... And I, and I can tell the subtle ways that this part of me has been like trying to get my attention. And it, and it comes into like a lot of fearful thoughts, like things, this part of me will like project things happening to our head again. It's like, this part of me has just been afraid because there hasn't been this, there hasn't really been enough love for it to be fully seen yet and embraced. And it's so nice that there finally is that love for it. Like even the deepest, darkest parts that my psyche really didn't want to see. And now they're being unearthed and brought to the light. And when that happens, there's so much more freedom. There's so much more of this liberation to move in, in this world how you want to move, to do what you want to do. And I'm starting to feel that like, okay, committing to a creative project again doesn't feel as daunting because this part of me, now that I've seen it so fully today and will continue to commit to see it, it's like not jumping in the way every time, you know, it's not, it's not so resistant. It's like that was the resistance right there. And I finally saw it so clearly today. And I just, uh, yeah, it's like that part of me now that it's being embraced with love and light. It's going to, it's like on board. It's like he gets to come with now. That's what he said. Hey, wait for me. Wait for me. Remember the part of you that feels like you had brain damage and that feels diminished and that you just tried to gaslight yourself and pretend like, you know, like that wasn't something you felt happened. And you just tried to move forward right away and to recontextualize that right away. So you didn't have to look at maybe an ugly truth there. Or maybe it's something's not true there. But you just weren't willing to look at how a part of you felt. Like, remember that? Remember me? It's like, you don't get to like move forward until you look at me fully. Until you see me fully. Until you put all of how I feel on the table um, until you put all of how I feel, how, until you bring that into the light, essentially. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, so, it feels really good to allow that part of me to speak, to integrate. And now, because that part of me has, has had a chance to do that, and I'm going to continue to allow it to do that, it's like I get to bring myself forward I get to give myself like give more of myself to you guys to this creative passion to writing blogs again um, and now my space is like more filled with love and less filled with denial right I can almost like feel right where it was it's like right here you know um, in the gut area the left gut which makes sense and it's because I'm now there's like more light there more love there, it's like my space is, is actually becoming safer. I'm like safer with myself now. I'm safe with that part of me who feels diminished, who feels all these darker things, right? Damaged. I'm becoming safe with this part of myself. I'm loving this part of myself. Um, and so now that my space is becoming more safe for everyone, for, you know, not just for clients, but for, for just people I meet in my day-to-day -day life. There's a safe space here now, a safer space than there was yesterday or even this morning. Um, and that's really beautiful. And that's what, what happens when we start to heal, when we start to look at parts of ourselves 
that we buried away, shunned away, been afraid to see before. Um, it's a really magical, magical experience that I just wanted to hop on and share with you guys. And thank you so much. Um, at the end of this video, I want to say thank you so much to Nick. Nick, your incredible donation. It was like beyond humbling. I didn't even know what to say. But it's made this journey of mine unimaginably easier. Thank you, Andreas, for your generous donation. Um, and I really loved spending retreat with you. As hard as that was, what a retreat, right? Lots of light, lots of healing. Um, thank you, Creating Lifelines, for your donation. Thank you, Emma. And thank you, Brittany. All of your donations, they helped me out so much. And thanks to all of you who continue to book sessions and bring your inner child um, forward and bring uh, your truth forward to me. Uh, I, I really, really love connecting with you guys on that level and in that type of healing space. It, truly so fulfilling um, for me. So thank you to all of you who support this work. If you would like to support this work and my journey with a donation, I will put the link underneath. If you would like to support this journey um, through booking a session with me, I will also put that link underneath as well. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. Namaste.